again, solve by factoring. This is already in standard form. However, I have to get rid of this greatest common factor, which is 2. So pulling that out to get 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. When the leading coefficient is not 1, the factoring is a bit more difficult. Um, so let's, let's move over here and work on this. When the leading coefficient is 2, I'm going to have something in this form. And I have a negative here, so I also know that one of these is going to be a positive and one is going to be a negative. But I don't actually know which one yet. But I know I'm going to have plus minus or I'm going to have this. Okay, let's look at some factors of 12. Factors of 12 would be 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. Now, 5 is not that large of a number, especially when we think about the fact that we're going to have to be also, so multiplying by 2. So if I go and use something like 6, and it ends up getting multiplied by 2, it's going to be very large. The difference is going to be great. I want factors that are smaller, since the difference between those even with this 2x thrown in, is only going to be 5x. So I'm going to start with these because they don't have a large difference between them. So I'm going to start out just trying 2x plus 3 times x minus 4 and see what I get. So I'm not worried about the first term. I'm worried about the outer terms added to the inner terms and see if I get the correct middle term. I'm looking for the middle term equal to 5x. So this is going to give me 2x, 2x times negative 4, that's negative 8x, plus 3x, that's 5x. So I'm, I've got the right idea, but I've actually got the wrong signs here. So I'm going to try reversing the signs, because I want this to be a, this is negative 5x, I want it to be 5x, because here I have negative 8x plus 3x is negative 5x. So same idea, let's try different signs though. Okay, this time I'm making this negative and this positive. So this is going to give me 2x times 4, that's going to give me positive 8x, negative 3x is 5x. So this is correct. I got the correct middle term, so this is the correct factoring. And this can be a lot of work to factor these, so it's important to to go logically. For example, seeing that I don't have a very large term here, especially when I'm dealing with the 2x also, it's going to amplify things, to look for factors that aren't very far apart. Okay, so now I'm back here and I'm solving by factoring. <clears throat> this is going to give me 2x minus 3 times x plus 4 equals 0. Dividing both sides by 2, this 2 is just going to drop out. So when I use the zero product property, I'm going to get 2x minus 3 equals 0. And I'm also going to get x plus 4 equals 0. So I just need to go ahead and solve those to get 2x equals 3, or x equals 3 halves. Okay. Here, I just have x plus 4 equals 0, and that's simple. It's x equals negative 4. So I have two solutions, x equals 3 halves and x equals negative 4. I solve this by pulling out the greatest common factor, factoring that out, then factoring this trinomial into this, and using the zero product rule to give me 3 halves for a solution from here, and x equals negative 4 for a solution from here. So thanks for visiting educator.com, and I'll see you next lesson.